Twenty dollar. Thirty days hat September. April, April June, June, and November. November. All the rest have thirty-one. Except. Okay, except so today is February 27th, so this month we get cheated at a couple of days or two, so what, and who are you? Oh, now, Johnny, after all these years? Oh, sure. Sure. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Right, and I... Hey, you mean I sound like that over the phone? Yeah, just like one of the pole bearers at your own funeral, Pat. <laughs> okay, let's get down to business. Yeah, why not? But what's the worry about February being a little short on days this year, and every year? Plenty, because of something that happened almost six years ago. A case that even the famous Johnny Dollar couldn't solve. Oh, look, if you ever start adding up all the cases I haven't solved. Hey, wait a minute, six years ago? That's right. Bernard Margot. That's right. Barney the Bum. Yep, the chief hoodlum who died when he jumped off the Triborough Bridge in New York back there in 19... Hold it, Pat. You know, as well as I do, that whole thing was a phony so that big Mike Killian could collect Barney's 300,000 bucks insurance, remember? Well, I seem to remember you're spending a few thousand of the company's money trying to prove that. But I also remember you didn't even get to first base. Because I couldn't find Barney, couldn't find where he'd skip to. But if you could now, before the first of March, you'd save the company that 300 grand. Pat, you mean you got a lead on him? Maybe. Want to come over here and talk about it? Brother, I sure do. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Munch, 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 Frito. Corn chips, it's not polite to smack your lips. But you can't help it with Fritos, corn chips. Munch, 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 munch Frito. Corn chips. Next time you want something to munch on, try Fritos. They're so crisp, so tasty, so good. You'll see right away why we say Fritos are the corn chips made to munch. Fill a big bowl with Fritos next time you settle down to watch your favorite TV program. Boy, there's contentment in every munch. Munch, 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 munch Fritos, corn chips. Fritos are golden chips of corn, as nutritious as they are delicious. So full of good, crisp flavor, such good for you nourishment. They're the ideal snack for grown-ups and children alike. Get a bag of Fritos corn chips today and munch a bunch. F-R-I-T-O-S. Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the look before the leap matter. Barney Margot. Barney the bum. A strong arm for Big Mike Killian. And his case had made me look like a fool. So, expense account item one, a dollar and a quarter for a cab to Pat McCracken's office. Oh, this is one you'd really like to clean up, isn't it, Johnny? Sit down. Ah, uh, Pat, Eastern Trust and Insurance were crazy in the first place when they issued a big policy on the cheap mobster. I know. When they let him name Big Mike Killian as the beneficiary. Well, anybody with half a brain should have known something was wrong with I it. I know, Johnny. And then to top it all by waving the suicide clause. I know, the... I know. The minute we found out about it, we asked them to cancel it, but we were too late. Barney Margot had apparently jumped off the bridge. And neither you nor the police nor anybody else at that time could prove that he hadn't. And just because some of Barney's clothes were found in the water, because of that phony suicide note he left on the well, bridge. Well, don't forget the witness, Johnny, the girl who saw him alone out there on the bridge before he disappeared. Yeah, yeah, I Who remember. also saw something, presumably his body, topple off into the water. Mady. Mady Prescott was her yeah, name. Yeah, that's the one. And since Barney had been seen going onto the bridge but didn't show up after what she so saw... So they well. took Big Mike Killian's word for it that Barney made the leap. That's right. Whereupon Big Mike immediately claimed the insurance. However, Johnny... Killian has not been paid that 300 grand, nor will he be if you can produce Barney Margot in time. Yeah, but how much time? Well, according to the final decision of the courts while we were fighting this payment, unless he's picked up before March 1st... Oh, are you kidding, Pat? Today is the 27th of February, and yes. according to that little rhyme you tried to charm me with over the phone, yes. tomorrow is the last Johnny, possible chance. Johnny, will you listen? Yeah, uh, well... The girl, that Mady Prescott, just came back from Paris. Paris? Well, what's that got to do she with She made it? a report to the police, and they passed it on to us. She says that only a few weeks ago, right there in Paris, she saw Bernard Margot. Oh? Oh. Yeah. 
thanks to all the international red tape involved, there's no way we can possibly get him back here in time. Well, even so... What's more, all the proof in the world that he's still alive is no good unless he himself is brought back to New York. Oh, now, wait. Well, that was the decision of the courts. That's the way it stands. Oh, great. But, Johnny, if you somehow, and believe me, not only I, but the police will close their eyes to whatever method you might have to use, if you could somehow get him back here in time... Well, I'm thinking about a $10,000 fee, in addition to your expense account, if you produce him. Nothing, of course, if you don't. Before March 1st, it's impossible. Yes, I know. So, Pat, I'm going to try. If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try Camels. The Camel blend of costly Turkish and domestic tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor, easygoing mildness, real smoking satisfaction every time you light up. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the look before the leap matter. Item two, 1050 taxi, a train to New York and a cab to the 10th floor apartment of Miss Mady Prescott. I know, Mr. Dollar, my testimony that I'd seen him on the bridge and that I'd seen him drop off into the well, water... Well, that testimony, Miss Prescott, may cost the insurance company $300,000 unless I can produce Barney Margot before March 1st. Before March 1st? Yeah, and you say that you saw him in Paris. At an antique shop uh, run by a Monsieur Dubesson. Dubesson? What? Uh, nothing. Go on. Well, I was startled, to say the least. But I'm certain it was he, absolutely sure of it. Well, you were also pretty certain you'd seen him go off that bridge... I know, but I... I must have been wrong at that time. So you could also be wrong now. I... Uh, I know. But it's the only thing I have to go on. And you know, since you mentioned that name Dubasson... Well, thanks very much, Miss Prescott. <laughs> Dubasson's a fence there in Paris. Exactly the sort of character Barney the Bum might tie up with. Perhaps even as a contact for Big Mike killing him. As I stepped into the self-service elevator to get back to the street, I wondered... But I didn't wonder for long about anything. Okay, Jimmy, push that stop button. Yeah, sure, Milford. Between floors. Yeah. Uh, all right, what's the idea? Johnny Dollar, huh? Maybe. So there's only one reason you'd be calling on the Prescott date. What of it? Big Mike didn't like you interfering when poor Barney died. He don't like it now. Oh, well, that's just too bad. In fact, he don't like you. Now, Jimmy, go. Yeah. No! Yeah. Now, James, leave us dump this stiff in the basement. It was the building superintendent who found me there in the basement, got me back on my feet again. Item three, 10 cents for a call to one of the transatlantic airlines. Item four, 31 bucks for a cable grant. Then item five, a dollar for a cab to the 18th precinct headquarters, my old pal, Randy Singer. Sure, Johnny, a couple of big Mike Killian's boys. Must have been. You want me to have them picked up? No. Only I warn you, Killian will have an alibi for him, sure as God. Don't worry about him. I'll take care of that pair myself. Well, now, Johnny. And, Randy, all I ask is that you stand by until I get back here from Paris. Paris? Yeah, somehow I got to perform a miracle. I got to bring Barney Margot back here before March 1st. Today's the 27th. That means I have until midnight tomorrow night. So long, Randy. Uh, Johnny, wait a minute. Sorry, but every second counts, and I just have time to catch a plane. Hey, Johnny, let So long, baby, and wish me luck. I'm going to need it. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. 
Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. And now here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Item six, $420 for a plane ticket to Paris. When we landed at Orly, I put in a call to Louis de Massac, who calls himself a Chagri. If anyone in all of Paris knows the underworld, believe me, it's the gray cat. But I got no answer. Item seven, then, $2 American for a cab to the so-called antique shop of Francois Dubosson. It was there that Mady Prescott swore she'd seen Barney Margot. I knew better than to expect any real help from him, but he was my only chance, and time was running out. Ah, bonjour, monsieur. Qu'est-ce que vous devez? Ah, monsieur Johnny Dollet, the meddling American. That's right, Dubosson. And to what does the fair city of Paris owe the honor of your presence, eh? Bernard Margot. Margot? That's right. I want to know where he is, where I can find him. Now, by what could you possibly think I might know this Bernard Margot? Oh, dog, don't start beating about the And bush. do you think that I would tell you anything of him if I did? Now, look, to Bassan. I have not forget the trouble you have made for me when you last come here. No, 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 no. Maurice. Maurice. Uh, monsieur. Oh, no, you don't. Just stay where you are, Maurice. Pardon. Monsieur Delay. I suppose this gorilla is your bodyguard? Not at all. Well, if he tries to get rough, are you trying any tricks to us? You are a smart man, Monsieur Delay, but also a fool. Yeah. Maurice, you have my permission to leave now to arrange the funeral of your friend. Oh, oh bien, bien. You see, your alarm was for nothing. Okay, okay. But now, about this Barney Margot. I told you I knew nothing of him. And even if I did, do you forget, monsieur, that you have no, uh, <laughs> no authority here in France? Now, you listen. In other words, uh, why do you waste your time when you know that all you will learn from me is nothing? Threats. Even the promise of a bribe got me nowhere. So I left him, and again I put in a call to Louis de Marsac, my underworld contact. This time, the line was busy, at least a minute was, he was home. So item 8, 320 American for a cab to the dingy little apartment at the far end of the Rue de Pas de la Moule. It's one of the most disreputable looking buildings in the whole city. Dirty, squalid, falling apart at the seams. And of course, Le Chagri had to live at the top of four long flights. When I finally got up there, feeling slightly winded, I, I noticed that his door at the end of the gas lit hallway was half open. And I could see him inside, lying on the floor, the telephone dangling beside him. Hey, hey, Louis. De Marsac. Ah. Huh? Bien. Maurice. Oh, oh monsieur. Oh. Hello, I'm Burgess Meredith. Did you know there are over three million persons in America who are hard of hearing and not doing anything about it? Maybe you or some member of your family is hard of hearing. Well, fortunately, I've never had this problem. Some of my friends and family have. Now, a few years ago, your excuse might have been that you didn't want to wear a bulky hearing aid. But today, it's a different story. I've just seen the new Super 60 hearing glasses developed by Mako Electronics. If I hadn't known they were hearing glasses, I would have guessed them to be regular eyeglasses. It's a wonderful way for any hard of hearing person to conceal a hearing loss. There are styles for both men and women. For an interesting free booklet on hearing glasses for yourself or a friend, stop in at Mako or write to Hearing Glasses, CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York. Don't wait until your hearing gets worse. It may be too late. Send for your booklet today. Write CBS, 
485 Madison Avenue, New York. And now, Act Four of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> My sudden arrival had kept Maurice from killing Louis de Marsac. It got me that cloud on the head. But Maurice was gone now. After working over Louis for a few minutes, pouring some cognac into him, he finally came around. Oh, Monsieur Dolly. Yeah, that's a stone, Louis. Just let me help you up here on this couch. Oh, but, but so much pain. Yeah, you really got it, brother. I have only for you, my oldest, my dearest friend, would I suffer so? Yeah, here. Here, take another slug of this. No, 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 alas. Even that will not mend my broken head. Uh, would a couple of hundred dollars American help? Uh, eh? Oh? Did you get my cablegram? Oh, oui. And, and I, I found him for you. Barney? Where? It is uh, worth perhaps five hundred dollars. Three hundred. Uh, but, monsieur... Okay, three fifty. Where is he? But if monsieur Dubisson finds out that it was I who took care of Barney Margot... He already knows that I'm here. That's why he sent that Maurice character to arrange for a funeral. Funeral? And he was talking about your funeral. But now, wait. You say you've taken care of Barney the Bum? <laughs> it would perhaps be worth a little extra if I were to have him all tied up and waiting for you. What? <laughs> Listen, if you can actually deliver him to me, I'll give you a thousand bucks right now. But I can, monsieur. Where is he? And perhaps two thousand if I've arranged a way to get you both out of the country, back to the United States. With the, without anybody knowing about it. Yeah, yeah, 2,000. I'll cable it to you if I can get him back to the States before midnight tonight. Oh, before midnight, you see? New York time. Well, we can try, monsieur. Good, good. Then let's get going. But first, perhaps I'd better accept the 1,000 just in case. All right. All or nothing, 2,500 bucks if I make it. Ah, then come. First, we get Barney out of the closet here. Out of the... Out of this... Closet here in your room? But of course. Well, I'll be. And then we drive to the airfield where the plane is waiting for you. Believe me, we'd never have gotten away with a thing like this back in the States or anywhere else I can think of, all without the help of the Chagri. After making sure that Barney was securely bound and gagged, we piled him into a car that DeMarsac said was his, only I doubt it. We headed westward through Versailles to the city of. Well, maybe for diplomatic reasons, I better not mention the name of it. Anyhow, their little airport was an old amphibian plane waiting for us. This time, it was the pilot I had to haggle with. 7,000 bucks for the trip. But there were 300,000 at stake. Item 9 for a transatlantic call to Randy Singer in New York. No, no, listen, Johnny. This is too wild, too crazy. You got the ID for this plane? You've written it down? Are you sure I have, but Johnny... And all you have to do is get us a clearance to land if we make it. You're out of your mind. This stunt could cause an international incident that even the United Nations couldn't... You want Barney the bum, don't you? Well, of course we do. Then I'll do. lay him right in your lap if you'll hang up the phone so that we can make our takeoff. Johnny, listen to me. Randy, I haven't got any more time to talk because if I don't get Barney back there before midnight tonight... No, Johnny, no, listen... See you in New York. I hope... Oh, that plane trip was something I'll never forget. Sure, on the ground, the big amphibian looked pretty good. But up in the air, it shuddered and shook like the old crate it really was. And I wondered if she had enough gas aboard. What sort of double talk the pilot used to keep us from being ordered down, I'll never know. Any second, I expected a bunch of fighter planes to start buzzing us. But somehow we made it. And Randy, bless his heart, and I don't know how he did it, Randy got us a clearance to land. Matter of fact, he even had an escort waiting for us to haul Barney off to the clink and take me back to the office at headquarters. Yeah, by some miracle, it all worked out. Except for one thing. But so help me, Johnny, if you ever again try to pull a thing like... Yeah, falling asleep again, huh? <laughs> Just like you did all the way in from the airport. Huh? Uh, well, I can't say that I blame you. Mission accomplished, all that sort of stuff. Mission accomplished, sir. Uh... Huh? Did you happen to notice what time it was when we sat down at the airport? Sure, right after midnight, 12.07. Just exactly seven minutes too late. Too late? Rolling in the courts, don't you get Johnny. it, Randy? 
In order to save the company paying off that 300,000 clams, I, I, I had to get him back here before midnight. Last night, February 28th, before the 1st of March. Oh, no. So Wait. the fortune I've run up in expenses has to come out of my own pocket. Johnny! And I thought I was going to make myself a cool $10,000 fee. Listen! Uh, you were right, Randy. I should have known better. It was crazy. The whole idea was completely crazy right from the beginning. Johnny, will you listen to I me? I had any sense I'd blow my brains out seven minutes after midnight. That's right, February 28th. So you've forgotten just one little thing. Yeah. This just happens to be 1960. So what? I had to get that punk back here before the first of... Yeah. Leap year. Randy. That's right. So today just happens to be the day before the first of March, February 29th. Oh, no. You mean I made it after all? You mean I... Oh, no. It's a fact, Johnny. Fact. <laughs> You know something? I should have blown my brains out for forgetting that extra day this month, this year. But instead, I'll just take that 10,000 bucks in fees. As for the expense account, hold your hat. $9,571. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant tasting chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight is x-lax in your medicine cabinet now here's our star with something to think about on account of its brotherhood week johnny john it's a thought for this week and every week and it's simply this in my job i run across all sorts of people both the right guys and the wrong ones and this much i'm sure of a crook is a crook in any place in any language he's just no good but an honest man a man who respects the law and the rights of his fellow humans regardless of his hue, his origin, or his accent. Well, believe me, that one is yours truly with Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Lawrence Dobkin, Forrest Lewis, Frank Gerstle, Herb Vigran, and Tony Barrett. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Listen next to Suspense on the CBS Radio Network. Hiya, folks. Jimmy Durante, in person. And I'd like to tell you about some of the things that's close to my heart. Well, Jimmy, I'm sure one thing that's close to everybody's heart is the heart fund. And that's especially true today, Heart Sunday. Hey, that voice sounds very familiar. Well, it should, Jimmy. It's me, Gary Moore. That's who that is, Junior. Yeah, I thought I'd help you tell the folks how important Heart Sunday is. Everybody wants to get into the act. Well, I certainly hope you're right, Schnoz. We want everybody to get into the act to help fight our nation's number one health enemy, heart disease. And the best way to do that is by supporting the Heart Fund, our number one defense. You planned to say something like that, didn't you, Jimmy? I did indeed. So, friends, when your Heart Fund volunteer calls on you today, Heart Sunday, remember your dollars will help our scientists develop new and better ways to safeguard healthy hearts and save those that are already afflicted. Come on, folks. Dig deep for your contributions to the Heart Fund. Believe me, it'll do your heart good, too. Radio 59, WROW, with the new service unmatched in the Tri-Cities.